Morning guys, we're here today at the Motor Heritage Centre at Gaydon. Um, this building is actually quite special to me because um, I was actually involved uh, with my dad's architectural practice when it was first built and we originally went to see the collection uh, in some derelict barns which was incredible. There was some of Isigonis' old um, sketches in rusty filing cabinets and Le Mans winning D-types sitting around so we're going to take you in and show you around. And as an added bonus we turned up today and there's a car show here. And a Studebaker. Weird and wonderful that is. And the beauty of classic car ownership. Okay, GT4 RS. This is no my, what? GT4 is it? Yeah, GT4. No, this is just a GT4. They do do an RS, but this is just a GT4, which is undeniably my, I think, probably the best driver's car for. I think I'd agree Manual, with you. Smaller, and still sounds amazing. And just look at it. I know. There you go. Don't see many of these out. Cracking reg on that Cerbera. There we go, nice little 1.9 GTI. Again, cracking reg on that. This Moe. Probably my favourite Fast and Furious car. Yeah, and a really nice VX220. Cracking speed line wheels on it. Nice competitor to the Elise, arguably a better engine than the Elise and a similar platform but not quite as popular at the time. And of course one of the new additions at the museum is the Jaguar Heritage Collection uh, which also houses on the first floor of the building some of the other vehicles that aren't on display in the main museum. Um, so we'll go and have a look at that in a second. So it's a California import this car and the guy who owns it was saying that uh, it's had a full mechanical rebuild but wanted to keep the patina on the outside of the car. Martin and the obligatory 007 reg on it. And wow, this 944 is for sale. It's actually got a 5.7 litre Chevy V8 in it. Very clean car. And yours for the price of £17,500. I think the tailpipes might be a bit of a giveaway on this one. Very clean, nicely OEM modded 370Z. Nice little, really clean Riley Elf. Now, Clan Crusader, you don't see many of those around. Um, mini based, I think, in its platform. And a Series 1 Land Rover, just shout how they should be used to dirty. So this car is a 2023 Wells Vertige, which I didn't know a lot about, um, actually built in Bishop Sitchington, just around the corner from here. Uh, 140 mile an hour, 200 brake horsepower car based on the Ford Duratech. Ford collection here, RS200. Escort Cosworth rally car, four door SAF Sierra and a Focus ST, I think, hiding in the corner. So this uh, is probably one of the, the first production Mini, Morris Mini Minor. I had a Morris Mini Minor, and back in the day, I studied this car so much for the special features on it. So no recess on the windscreen. You see inside, it's got vinyl kick plates on the doors. Obviously the straight Magic One gear lever. Um, I spent a lot of time looking at these, and they're a real gem in the museum. Nice Astra GTE, just tucked away at the top of the museum. Unless you come up to the toilets, you wouldn't see. Nice painting of Paddy Hopkirk's Mini. So 
So a couple of Austin 7 race cars here that the Pathfinder pedal car was based on. A little proper Coventry car here in Austin Swallow. Uh, later, obviously, Swift and Swallow became SS and then became Jaguar. So a lovely little section here with a lot of the old um, British motor prototypes. looking at MG EX E. Showing you some of the tools the designers used in the day to make the prototypes. They currently have a Vauxhall exhibition on here. This is the Vauxhall SRV concept car. So this is a 1947 Nuffield Gutty military prototype. 1969 Austin Ant, an attempt to adapt the Mini into more like a utility vehicle. Look at this with its sparkly paint and one of the early EVs in 1970, a Crompton Leyland electric car. Obviously the future of EV at that point being microcars. So XJ13, the fated Le Mans car that never run there, probably my favourite Jaguar ever. Absolutely lovely looking car, uh, probably one of the best looking cars ever built in my opinion. This is the Bob Tullius uh, Group 44 E-Type. Uh, Dad's actually drove this when he was working at the Heritage Museum. And it is an absolute beast. And this is a Rover BRM, a uh, Le Mans gas turbine car. Apparently the guys don't run this very often because every time they do, it gets so hot, it actually melts the paint on the back of the car. I'm not sure if this is Postman Pat or Del Boy. And look at that trophy cabinet from all the Jaguar successes and two absolutely lovely models in there. A Rover T4 gas turbine saloon. Imagine pulling up Sainsbury's in that one. So this is the 2008 Jaguar XFR V8, uh, one of the fastest Jaguars, specifically with a 5 litre V8 supercharged and reached 225 mile an hour. cars here that would sit in Law C's garage if you had enough money to buy them. I uh, love the MP412C. For me, it's a re of the original McLaren F1. And good enough to make a Bond car, the 2001 Aston Martin Vanquish. Don't get much prettier than that. Always a good selection of royal cars here and painted that lovely colour of dark burgundy. This was the State One Range Rover built in 1974, so 50 years old. And the Judge Dread car, which actually I believe was built on a Land Rover 101 forward control platform. And here's a specific area dedicated to race and rally. Uh, Paddy Hopkirk's uh, Minis here. Metro 604, absolute monster back in the day and the TR7 V8 rally car. And I am becoming a big fan of some of the old vintage. Imagine taking a 1925 Morris Oxford and turning it into a race car like this. Fully lightweight with holes all the way through the chassis and really not much to it. And a number of the land speed record cars here. And as you can see, super, super streamlined. Good example of how these were built. Super, super lightweight. Um, just with aluminium skins in there and a few structural struts just to hold it all together but absolutely minuscule all the stuff in there and you can see the position that the driver used to sit in with his head just sitting out the bubble here's the impact of innovation exhibition Okay, sports pack minis, fantastic cars. I loved them ever since I saw the Top Gear India Special. Yeah, and I wanted one as my first car. As did every one of my age. But they only had one airbag and mothers worry about safety, right? So yeah, absolutely. I got in the way of that, but I love them. Especially with the MPI engine, they're meant to be quite good. It's not the airbag I'd be worrying about. No, right. ha having seen one of these go in a ditch, Oh right, and having to put a new front yeah, on no, it. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah, but also 63 brake horsepower. My fee, it's only 69. Yeah, absolutely. It's not far off. Cool. 
in a really cool cutaway of a not so cool car, Nissan Leaf. You see the battery packs there and the powertrain at the front, which resembles an engine remarkably. The start of the innovation journey, the Model T. And one of the hydrogen prototypes. Uh, this was made in 2013, River Simple Rasa Alpha. By the time I was 15, father was so ill that I had to leave school. And I became an apprentice to a cycle. Jackie Stewart's DFB engined Formula One car. car on special loan at the moment. Lovely blower Bentley. Okay so here we've got the Lotus Carlton. I drove one of these back in the day when they were brand new and it was the most awesome car. It would spin its wheels in every gear, none of the modern technology on the car but such a confidence inspiring car to drive and an absolute monster. And a Vauxhall Forenza, look at the styling on the front of that with the closed in headlamps. And Lady C's dad had one of these, a Viva. Apparently she really loved the fact that there was actually two sculpted seats in the back of it rather than the typical bench seat you had in the car at the time. And actually a lot of these Vauxhalls, including the Chevette next door, quite stylish. This one over here, uh, quite interesting because actually matches the racing Puma in a lot of its trim. It has the same seats in it in a very similar colour. Um, an Astra Coupe 888, quite a rare beast. I love this old garage, all the bits and pieces around. I'm sure I can find some useful bits in there. The race car of my day, the Group C Silkcut Jags. Absolutely legendary. And 77RW, one of the most famous E-types out there. You can see external bonnet locks on it, uh, inset bonnet louvers, which all the early cars had, and the dotty dash interior. The steering wheels as well were slightly different, that they had the exposed um, inner aluminium rim on them. So I know quite a lot about these because I grew up with one as a youngster. The 2012 CX75 prototype hybrid car, as featured in the Bond films, um, and this car's actually had its battery removed for safety in the workshop, not forgetting that you've got lots of cars here all full of petrol. This is XJ42, the prototype and the replacement for the XJS. I quite like it, it's like a mini um, XJ220 at the front, isn't it? Yeah. So this is the original test mule for the XK8. Um, now we know what the car like, doesn't leave much to the imagination, but at the time I think it would have left people guessing. And the F-Type for concept car, wish it had stayed like that, absolutely beautiful, low drag windscreen and no wipers and things like that, but obviously got changed to get it homologated. And look at this beauty, the XF concept car. Ben was just saying, why do cars go backward from concept to reality? Because actually most of this you could have implemented. No door handles on the door, actually hidden in the pillar there to open it. Beautiful wing mirrors, uh, really sleek looking car. And look at the headlamps on that. And actually when it then went into production, ended up being that. Which I had one of these and it was a great car, but not as nice as the prototype. And a Jaguar exhibition wouldn't be the same without a Project 7. Which is really cool, but I just don't know if I prefer a GT3 or a Rover. GT3 is probably a better car, but, but these, these are sound certainly angry. sound angry and look more distinctive. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it probably would have one, and a bit more special in many ways. But no roof. Is it, oh no, they do have a roof. Do they? No. 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 But then what are the latches for? Oh, I don't know. I think that because the screen's taken from the F-Type oh. um, convertible, isn't it? Okay. So this is replicating the D-type scoop over the back of your head. Yeah, which is very nice. Okay, so I have just found that there is in fact a roof. Yeah, uh, so Ben was right that. from the start. <laughs> so that is the connections for the roof. Quite how it connects at the back. I think there, and then in oh, the back yeah, of the on the top, the top of the hoops, look. Because if you look on this reference yeah. photo, it sort of goes down to like here somewhere, doesn't yeah. it? 
I'm sure it won't keep you dry though in the wet. So we're just explaining, these are the Austin Swallows, which were basically a Swallow coach built body on an Austin 7 chassis, which then the Swallow joined with Swift and became Swift and Swallow, which later became SS. The SS name was removed uh, following the Nazis in the war and became Jaguar. So this is the collection of cars not displayed in the museum um, from the general collection, but people can come up and have a wander around and get close to all of these. And what's really cool here is you can see all the cars being worked up in the workshop below. In the end, one of the cars that Dad's worked on, strangely in bits again, so I hope he did all the bolts up properly. And this is a really famous uh, Longbridge Mini that was found abandoned in the tunnels when the site was redeveloped with only a few miles on the clock, um, but been totally beaten, battered and stored where they stored the scrap in the building. They've got the ERA Turbo Mini here, um, just under 100 brake horsepower, but really, really expensive at the time. The Rover SD1, really space age at the time, um, with its three and a half litre V8, and a really nice early Honda Prelude. A few celebrity cars, the Skyfall Land Rover here, 